Hello, and welcome to the Healing Dreams Project, exploring projective dream work for your health and wholeness. With hosts Billy Ortiz and Dr. Royce Fitz. I am the producer Viviana, and today we are going to explore why isn't dream work more mainstream? Billy, answer the question. I just I'm I'm newer to this dream dream community and I'm just surprised why I, I know about dream time in Australia. I know that we all dream, and yet I don't understand why this process of 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 getting to know our dreams better is not a mainstream topic. What what are your thoughts on this, Billy? Oh, wow. Isn't this something I wake up and think about almost every morning? <laughs> it's It has a lot to do with, and here's my take on it, it's a, a lot to do with the fact that the dreams always speak in metaphor and symbol. So when I wake up and I have this very bizarre dream, none of it makes sense to me as the dreamer. So there's a, there's a piece in there about casting it away because it's just nonsense. It's like, why would I care about that? That's ridiculous. That's a, you know, because we're stuck in that literal literalism. And the other piece is that, you know, I think there, I think there's a, a, a universal desire for all of us to understand what our dreams mean, but we don't have anywhere to go where it's accepted very often. A lot of times it's like, you know, maybe we're at work and you know, we come in and we're telling somebody at the coffee break room, like, hey, I had this amazing dream last night. Everybody there is going to freeze and not know what in the world to say or do about it. And then, of course, there's always that, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Oh, was it like a sexy dream? You know, that kind of thing. And it's like somebody wants to immediately throw it away again. And I think a lot of it is that we don't know what our dreams mean. And we don't know what to say about other people's dreams unless we've had some kind of experience working with metaphor. And, and this is one of the reasons I'm so dedicated to this style of dream work is that it it's, um, allows us to enter someone else's dream and imagine it for ourselves so that we can have the opportunity to say something in the, in the I form, uh, imagining myself in the dream. Um, that way, I'm not going to say, you know, and we just don't know what the hell to say half the time because it's just not, a, it's not a language that people have learned or it, unless you've put some effort into it. So that's my first take on it. Wow. Um, and Royce, what, what is your, what would be your. Yeah, I have a lot of energy about your question, Viviana, because uh, we, we live in, in, in a world that, and, and there's no way to completely describe this accurately, but here are some impressions. We live in a world that doesn't know what to do with the inner self and the unconscious self or combining those two ideas. So we have factory workers, farmers, ranchers, physicians, people who help clean the streets, and every one of us dreams, and there isn't a way, and there isn't a, a, an encouraging way for people to stop and say, you know, I had this dream last night, and to have a listener say, oh, tell me more about that. We don't have the culture, or the words, or the support system that lifts that and holds that up, as we should now. Part of what I think is happening is dreams, as Billy alluded to, are really outrageous and scary and very ununderstandable if we only look at them literally. So, so, and because we have a kind of a, especially in the Western world, and yet I do believe that it is almost universal, except in some wonderful pockets, we have a uh, uh, a, a way to dismiss and to worship, if I may use that word, uh, a kind of an ideology of logic. And logic is interpreted as what we understand logic in the waking world. You know, how does A equal B equal C, uh -huh. etc. And And so then that trips us up because dreams don't go with that kind of logic. Mm -hmm. And so we dismiss them. And, and the logical world has 
done a lot of amazing things. It's trying to put humans in space. It's invented these vehicles that we drive around in, and it's provided us with medicines, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of logic. Now, what we don't really explore in my, from my perspective is how might dreams have been a part of those inventions Mm. And they, they are a part of many inventions. Sometimes they're conscious links between, oh, this is, I dreamt about such and such. And look what I invented. Yeah. I dreamt about a song and look what song I wrote or a book or other, other pieces of art. And the, like the chemical table of elements that people have to study in chemistry. It's like those part, some of those came out of a dream that that the problem solver had it suddenly got it and it's like let's honor this and yet the dis in my view distorted logical aspects of society dismiss it let's just what it, it's not necessary for us to look and your question viviana is Yes, is, is the other side of that question is, yes, it is necessary. How can we make it more, in your words, mainstream? Mm -hmm. How can we make it more mainstream? Billy, <laughs> I want to make it more mainstream. I just think this stuff is amazing. Well, great. and I don't understand why. Yeah, I brought it up. I did bring it up at a party I was in last yesterday. Ooh. And I asked people what their dreams were. But uh -huh. And how did they handle your question? No, they. I had one woman uh, tell me her dream, and then you know it was noisy. It was not really the place to do it, but I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed listening to her dream, and then I gave her some, mm -hmm. you know, if it were my dream scenarios, and uh -huh. uh, and she, was she is a she is a, a therapist actually. I don't oh. know. She works with uh, mental health in mental health. So maybe she's she's more open than normal <laughs> than normal people are to sharing dreams. But well, you know, yeah. Why isn't it more mainstream? That's a great question. I mean, it it's you know, I remember this was years ago, and I had just gotten really involved with dream work, and I I just was just as you're expressing, I just was like so like in you know, just passionate about it. I just wanted to know more and more. And I, I was at some sort of event and I was talking to this person and I'm telling her all about this and this and this. And I went on and on and on. And I told her how fascinating it was. And she listened very carefully. And then at the very end, she goes, but is there really anything to it? And right. I, I was like, what? I, I mean, I was I, I didn't say that out loud, but my face must have looked stunned because I talked a good 15 minutes about how much I love this work and how how hard I was working at bringing people together in groups and and organizing events and how I you know loved it so much and it was that that is there really anything to it that comment was oh, I can understand that com I come from the astrology tarot world I can understand that comment that comment and it's a common comment yeah. coming from that world but I just thought the the dreams would be so much more huge than even astrology and tarot what do you what? well it's it's so, yeah go ahead go ahead well uh, i i'm not sure i'm addressing that specific thing but i i, I feel like i am viviana the, um, the dreams are not con uh, well uh, as far as we know they're not controllable you know they just kind of pop in and they do <laughs> their amazing uh mo movie that they give us Okay, and people have this illusion that we ought to be able to control stuff. And if we can't, then we can dismiss it. Now, in science, in, in, and I respect linear scientific study on dreams, and they are right. Yeah. However, they think they're 100% right about all the meanings of dreams by having these linear dust of the night interpretations. Uh, okay, again, they are right, and they're not all right, and 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 yet, so when we look, so since dreams aren't controllable, we try to imagine words to use to describe dreams so that they sound controllable. Mm 
and they're not. They just keep happening. Uh, I come from a, a deep theological and, and Christian church background, and dreams are so minimal, minimalized in that setting, and yet in historical yeah. Jewish and Christian writings, there are a lot of dreams. A lot. And, it's in the Bible. Yes, and, I mean, and yet yet modern people tend to say, oh, no, they're, 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 they don't mean this, or they don't mean anything. You know, that was for a long time ago, and there, it is not. It, it, I'll stop there. I see both of you really wanting to talk, so I'll no, be quiet. Like, I totally understand. I know, it's like, it's shocking. It's shocking how, how much it is so nice a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and, and to add to just this whole discussion and along with what Royce is saying, I think some of it's based in fear. And, and it's because when I, when I have a dream, it's completely, I'm completely unconscious to the, under, to the meaning of that dream. And even though I, Billy, have been doing dream work for like over 25 years, I still don't know what my dreams mean. So when I, when I share a dream with someone, I'm sharing a part of myself that I don't know. It's a very vulnerable, it's a very vulnerable space to be in because especially if I, I'm with my close dream worker friends, the minute I utter the dream, they're like going, looking at me like this, like, well, of course, you know, this is what we've dealt with, with before with your dreams, but, of course, but I'm unconscious to it because it's my dream. I'm uniquely and selectively blind to my own dream material. So I think part of the fear that a lot of people who don't understand how the, the, healing effects of dream work they don't they are frightened to share because they're thinking oh no i'm i'm gonna be sharing something that that shows that i'm kind of nuts or i'm, I'm kind of like off the mark or you know what the hell i mean i just worked like i just earlier today i did a session and it was a very sexy dream and those are the kind of things that to to share those really intimate details with someone and be willing to be open and vulnerable takes a lot of courage and if it's something that it's not that I'm not that familiar with, I I'm afraid as the as that dreamer. I'm afraid to to share bits of my unconscious material without knowing what it might mean. This is a, a vulnerable journey that we're on when we are inviting ourselves to explore dreams. And dreams, we probably are, are come out of our evolutionary process we are we are because of our dreams we have evolved because of our dreams and my belief is that all living species have some kind of ability to dream not necessarily like what humans do and yet it's there and evolutionary biologists have sometimes asked that question do dreams help us evolve and my bottom line is, of course. And how? I don't know. And yet they're a part of us. And, and because we can't control that, at least in how we view logically what control looks like, we try to dismiss it and try to make it look like we invented all of this stuff by our logic waking self. And it's probably not true. Yeah. Wow. That's it too. Oh, oh, and, and so, and so, so Viviana, back to your original question, why doesn't society and culture and the humans, why don't we do that? Why don't we pay more attention? It, as, as, as uh, Billy speaks, this is a weird, vulnerable, exposing kind of part of us. And we are trained to guard ourselves from authenticity and vulnerability so that we can survive because the outside world tends to be pretty cruel. And if we expose ourselves without some form of, of true healthy support, we're, we could be in danger. So I, I think it's just, it, it not just, it is a way to protect ourselves to dismiss dreams. I, if it's okay, I, I want to relate. I wrote an essay a long time ago. It's on my website, RoyceFitz.com, under dream articles, that's called The Dreams of Leadership. And in that short essay, 
I asked the questions, wouldn't it be amazing that when we gathered like at the coffee shops every morning or when yeah. we're around the breakfast table or when we're at church or in, in, a, in a group of trusted people that we just normally, normally, naturally share, this is what I dreamt last night right. and have this loving community hold that dream without judging it and shaming us, blah, 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 not interpreting it literally, but to ask gentle questions. It, I, I'm convinced it would change our world. Now, I have this little example about President Jimmy Carter, uh -huh. who, as he, when he was defeated by Ronald Reagan in 1981, I believe, he, he owns this in his own story, if I remember correctly, he went through deep depression. And he wondered, what should he do with the rest of his life? Right. And as he was doing the activities of trying to make a new life, he was relatively young at the time. He also was wondering, along with his wife, what, how to use their energy and insight and passion for the world. Well, he says, one night I bolted awake and he thought of the Carter Center or what became the Carter Center for Peace and Justice. And did he dream that? In my projection, yes. If I were Jimmy Carter, I dreamt that. I may not remember the dream, but I do remember I bolted awake and this is what's happened. And for 40 more or more years, he has been a peacemaker mm -hmm. in an unbelievable way out of this despair and, in my view, sleeping on it. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, why can't we do that in the waking world and have conversations like us three are having? Why not? We're pioneers, but we'll always be pioneers. It's frustrating and sad. What's happening in the Ukraine? How could this have been avoided if we could have dream conversations that could change us for health and wholeness? Going back to the Australians, they, their whole culture, the indigenous people, they dream time. I mean, it was so important in their societies and in the native indigenous people of the Americas mm -hmm. as well. How, how could we have lost? I mean, I'm with you, Royce, a thousand percent. I would love, I mean, I, here I was at a party desperate to talk to somebody about their dreams. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's it's the one way to just really uh, connect with somebody and a, a meaningful conversation comes out of it. Mm -hmm for both parties, both people learn, we learn from each other's dreams. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you a, a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. I think, I think uh, Royce touched on something really good and earlier about, you know, how the dreams are, are us evolving and the, we're in the process of evolving while we're dreaming. And that's part of what makes it sort of scary when we when we look at the dream because it's just right up ahead of us it's like you know several steps ahead of us so i don't know this part of myself yet i don't know anything about it so i think that's part like goes back to the fear piece but it also goes back to you know what we've touched on a little bit here and there is like a, a need to control and and to truly understand dreams I have to allow myself to sacrifice to whatever the the images are and metaphors are in the dream. I mean, because there's a tendency when we go to record it to try to make it make sense. Like, I you know I want this to, to go linearly like a like a newspaper article. And I just want to get the facts. I just want to get the facts. But we all know how dreams can be very out of the box. And so there there there'll be a dream where I'm watching a play, but I'm also an actor in the play, and I can actually feel myself in both positions at the same time. Well, that's impossible in the waking world, but in the dream world, it's, it is possible. So I have to honor the dream and record it the way that I remember it the best I can, and sometimes it's almost impossible to do that. So again, that's a place where I can say, well, okay, 
I give up because you know there's no way I'm gonna you know it's the same thing happens when we're in the car a lot of this is, always shows up like this um you know I, I feel like I'm driving in the car and then I go no wait I'm in the back seat and then they go and then sometimes they they'll go no wait I'm in the passenger seat and the thing is I'm in I'm in all those places at the same time in the dream or I'm having two or three versions of the dream at the same time simultaneously one t- one dream I'm in the driver's seat one dream I'm in the back seat so on so on and so forth so they but that doesn't calculate in in written language it's very difficult for us to say I was in every single place in the car at the same time <laughs> but I could be having those I could be having three dreams simultaneously as well so there's this expansion of consciousness that that is beyond words an expansion of consciousness that doesn't fit on a page and that's why a lot of times I suggest to people don't always just limit yourself to recording it on on a piece of paper or even on a voice recorder or whatever find another way to express the dream what does the dream want me to be doing you know it's i mean it, maybe it goes beyond words maybe it's a i need to get up and dance who knows <laughs> it's or, or make something you know that's always fun too so it, so there's a there's a place in there about how the dream will always be wiser than us and i think that's that's inhibiting as a human that wants to control everything and we're all addicted to control (laughs) let's just face it we want to control everything that's why this whole pandemic years have thrown everything up in an upheaval because we we couldn't control it we were like out of out we were in a place of like whatever plans and i had all kinds of things planned that had to be suddenly canceled um all kinds of events and you know graduations and weddings and all the, every, all the people so we we but that's why a lot of us were thrown off because that that control was completely gone so so that's another piece of it is it it's it's that um it's beyond my my waking life consciousness understanding so we've you're pointing out i believe that we have lost touch our modern selves have lost touch with some of the more uh, earthy and primal energies of who we are. And so the dream time understandings have been, in a sense, forgotten and or purposefully sacrificed so that we can have this illusion of, of, of control. Mm-hmm. And we do get paid to have this illusion of control. I mean, we do have our versions of luxury and yeah. and safety and and uh, health care, etc. So it looks like the logic is working fine. And then we lose touch with though our inner self. And you're asking, I'm asking, we're all asking, why can't we have a balance? of what we and and honor that both is real and let's try to understand both and hold have a way to hold in our heart and mind that both is is contributing to our health and wholeness yeah wow beautifully said grace yeah well and going back to the indigenous cultures as well it's like i think we as as you know, the industrialized Western society is the best way to explain it. We, we've lost- the, the polluting, destructive, industrialized Western society. Exactly. That's lost touch with the earth completely. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's the sacred quality of the dreams that's missing. And when someone shares a dream, it is, it's like a spell is being cast. It's a sacred moment. It's, this is a time when we all need to stop and listen and allow the images to enter and and see where what stirs in me when i hear that dream so there so there's there's that sacred bit of our common shared humanity i mean we all as you mentioned we all dream this is and you know any of us who've had pets we can see our cats and dogs just you know moving their little paws and their little nose twitching back and forth so everything living dreams everything 
so th so they i mean there's even evidence that that plants can dream you know there's yes. different there's different types of, of you know there's been all types of studies where you know you don't even have to say it out loud but you can be sitting next to like a your palm tree or whatever and you're thinking about you know they put the electrodes on the on the, on the plant and you're thinking about oh i have to trim I have to trim the, the the palm tree and the palm will react because he you know the they're they're the, my thoughts can be transmitted into and the and the the plant reacts i mean there's a there's a, i think it's in jeremy's book where he talks about this blue algae that during the day it's on top of the pond and it, and it and it's creating photosynthesis and all types of things and at night it 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 drops to the bottom of the pond but they but the researchers put you know some type of electronic device that <laughs> registers whatever's happening with the algae and the algae at that time is acting as though it's still on top of the pond so it's as though the blue algae is even dreaming the blue algae is dreaming of being in the sun so there, so you know, it's like it, the, it's it's limitless, and I mean, if we really open ourselves to the fact that this is how evolution takes place in all creatures, all living things across the planet, the universe, then we have to say to ourselves, "Wow, it must be important. <laughs> it must be important because otherwise, what would be the point of it? What you know, it can't just be." I, I what is it that Royce always says it's it's the random uh, dust of the night or whatever that a lot of scientists say so it's you know a lot of times they say oh it's just you know your brain is just figuring some stuff out and and recalculating and it's like the the bio computer is you know rebooting yes and it's yeah. also helping yes that's very important we all know that if we don't dream we're, we'll get very sick and Things there's this. I'll tell you another story later after I've finished this. But but there's there's a a sense of you know I think I think it's I come from the understanding of of being in spiritual awe of the dream. That's how how important it is to me. Every time I hear a dream, I'm like wow wow because I know because it's always different. I mean I hear thousands of dreams over over my my professional life and i i've never met a dream exactly the same i mean with sure there's same similar themes there's things that happen you know that are that can be similar metaphors and things but but i've never met a dream that's exactly the same as the as the last 10 or 15 i heard <laughs> you know so it, so that's another thing it's an infinite source of wisdom so i we have to have great respect for that too if it were me Is this, is this addressing some of the question that you are asking? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, mean, is this anywhere near what you've asked us? About? Yeah, no. I mean, the fact that, yes, our world is very linear and mm -hmm. this is, this is represents our subconscious and we don't, mm -hmm. we don't develop that. It's not uh, something that is seen as an important part of our being necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's just t chalked up to the dreams yeah we do it it's necessary move on <laughs> you know we don't really... yeah I th I th what you just pointed out spoke to me in a sense it's like because we are so welded to our present view of what success and what knowledge and what uh, progress looks like we need in that perception that in my view distorted perception to dismiss the dream world because it doesn't look like it fits. And, and we're saying it does fit. How can we honor it more so that we as a, as, as a, as a species can become more healthy, more whole, instead of accidentally worshiping at the altar of linear thinking right. as the God or goddess. Right. Right. Um, a little bit ago, if it's okay to keep talking, uh, we were wondering what, how, or I think Billy brought up, we need to look at how to explore dreams uh, more than simply writing them down or recording them and, and yeah. just talking about them. Those are beautiful. Those are valuable. And there are other ways too. And it brings to mind 
uh, one of my favorite stories about uh, dream work in, in an ancient culture. Uh, John Neidert, who uh, many years ago was the poet laureate of Nebraska, and he also was a great writer, and he interviewed um, some of the uh, early Native people that uh, that as 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 their culture and our culture were clashing, uh, it became uh, a, 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 their memories were attempting to be preserved about their old ways in yeah. a way that was holy and and sacred and holistic for them as well as us. And so John Nider interviewed the person uh, whose uh, name is Black Elk, and he wrote the book Black Elk Speaks, yes. and it, it, it's still available, is a wonderful book. Black Elk was a young child at the time of one of the great destructive battles in human in our human history out here, uh, which we now call Custer's Last Stand, etc. And so, whatever terms we use, it was a destructive battle for both sides. Okay, this little boy was there. Later, as he grew into his own manhood, he told a dream that he had to his. Um, uh, elder in, in the clan, in the tribe. And the way the elder held this dream, he, the elder invited the clan to act out the dream and had horses and had uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, images of all that the boy had dreamt. And they performed the dream dream and this little boy was directing all of these people yeah. in in the in the clan so it's like how could this not be life changing right. to have an honoring of this little boy's dream and how it affects the tribe and how the tribe participated in the dramatic uh enacting of this dream. So that is how we have lost. It's an example of how we've lost the balance between our linear thinking and our more primal and earthy uh, wisdoms. Yeah. Whoa. God, that's great. I know I have that on audiobook. I need to re-listen to it again because it, it's very powerful. Yeah. I, I have in, in my Amazon uh, about to order the tracker which is by tom brown jr uh, a similar a native i read it long long time ago huh. uh, about the native uh, a native american uh, story a powerful book but anyway so i'm going to order this one now too black elk speaks by john mm -hmm. nider and i once performed a piece uh, mm -hmm. about the Custer's Last Stand. I oh, the, really? Yeah, I, and I was in Montana playing as a soloist with the Great Falls Symphony, playing this epic, uh, you know, commemorating this amazing event. So, You know, I, I've got to say too, after hearing that beautiful piece about Black Elk Speaks, years ago, and uh, I've done this work with a couple of different people who do uh, dream work in a different way, other than just the the speaking, and and Royce is probably familiar with this too. And they do a thing called dream portrayal, which basically we have they have hats and glasses and jackets and scarves and different pieces of cloth and things. And the the dreamers invited to choose people from the group to act out a piece of their dream. And I've seen this many times, and it's amazing because when they call on someone they say okay we're putting the hat and the glasses on you're my father and you know you put the shawl around the mom whatever and these dreamers somehow the people participating somehow know what to say with this is what the part that you go how does this work and the dreamer will the the person who actually had the dream will will not participate in the acting out of of the of the dream portrayal but they get to interview each character and also the inanimate objects like once I played fire, you know, I had to have this big uh, red uh, scarf and I, I just kept flowing it like fire, you know, and then I've seen other people play snakes and 
and different mm. types of things. So the point is, is as, as we were saying before, you know, we don't have to only record it in a linear fashion and expect that to be the only way the dream wishes to be expressed. The dream wants to continue to unfold. And again, they're infinite. So, so this is another thing that kind of scares everybody because it's never really done. We're never really finished. We always, that's why we say arbitrary close because I can never completely close the dream. I'm going to, it's going to keep coming to me. The images, even a year, uh, the dream I worked on this morning was, was a year old. I've worked on dreams that are 10 years old, 20 even. So it's, it, there's something about the outside of space and time where they, where they live, which is also frightening to people. And I don't, if I don't understand it, how can I, <laughs> how can I participate in it if I don't? So, so that not knowing, you know, that the piece of us that doesn't want to be in that position of not knowing that's, I think is also what's intimidating for a lot of people with dream work. Fascinating. <laughs> so for the for the listener, I'm imagining the listener feels overwhelmed by our energy about let's bring dream work into the mainstream. And maybe that will help. Maybe, you know, in a molecular way, we are doing our best to nudge it this way in into the more of the conscious uh, part of our cultures. Well, I'll add even that I think our survival as a species depends on it. I mean, that's how that's how vehemently I involved I am in this because because it's like I think our, our I, I'll say that again. I think our survival as a species depends on this. We need to listen more often to our dreams. We have we because if I dream about it, there's something I can do about it. That's another thing. It's like if I dream about it and oh no, sorry, you have this problem and there's nothing you can do about it. No, no, if I'm dreaming about it, that means that there's a solution involved available to me and the communal layer of the dream as well. So because I I work on many dreams that have to do with I can my projection is it has to do with climate change. And I can see that you know, my projection often is with some of these dreamers is like what part am I what part of me as the dreamer am I involved with actually taking action? You know, what, what, you know, what can I do to change my environment? What can I do to try to help change the environment of my neighborhood, my community? And, and what can I do to take part in being part of the solution? Because otherwise I wouldn't be dreaming about it. Again, you're saying that so well, dreams come for the world. My dream your dream and it is meaningful if you and i share and work on our dream together it's meaningful for us yeah. and it also comes for the larger world as as our world is suffering and our world is bent on being self-destructive the dream is trying to help us in in tiny and gigantic ways mm -hmm. to to address the issues of our health and wholeness and to help us not to poison ourselves. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, that, that, as you were saying, instead of cutting off from seeing the world and nature as something separate from me, realizing that I am part of nature and ev all of us are, and I, mm -hmm. I can't survive you know, the planet's going to, the earth's going to still survive without us. I mean, this is a rock that's been around here for like 9 billion years or something. So it's like, we're, I'm the one who's trying to save myself. So, so when, as, as a human living on, in the ecosystem, the mm -hmm. more pollution and, and things that we put out and the garbage that we throw into the oceans and all these kind of things, you know, the more that, that, that happens, the more I'm destroying myself because I need water, I need air, I need, I need healthy food. So, and if I continue to, if we continue to just treat everything like a garbage can, then, then I'm, I'm killing myself ultimately. And I think the dreams show us that, and they, they, that dreams, not so clearly like that, but they show us ways that we can interact with, with the, the, the images in the dream to where we feel more part of, of nature rather than separate. So in a way, it's 
perhaps uh, the fact that we're living so apart from nature. We live in cities, in concrete. I, I always wonder how birds can live in a city <laughs> you know, with no greenery and what. So anyway, I appreciate you both so much for shedding some light into this because as a an a newbie into this dream world, I I I'm first I'm surprised I didn't dive into this sooner. I mean, I've always kept a log of my dreams, but mm. I've never I doing it in a group setting has right. just opened my eyes. In fact, Billy, why don't you tell us a little bit about how someone if uh, if you're feeling drawn to trying out the dream work in person, mm. these are two people who are fantastic. Wow. So Billy, how, how can one get in touch with you? Okay, my website is wakeuptoyourdreams.com. I run a couple of group, you know, a couple groups throughout the the month. One meets in the in the daytime, one meets in the evening. Um, I also do private sessions, and I also actually now that COVID is calming down, I'm actually going to have another live and in person retreat in October, October 14th through the through the 16th, at a place here near Boulder called Peaceful Meadow. Uh, all the information is up on my website and i'm also starting another round of dream worker training which is with the rocky mountain the name of, a, of that part of my business is called rocky mountain institute for projective dream work and um i'm going to also have a um, um intro session coming up on may 21st and then then you can join into you can just do that standalone workshop or you can join the whole training program but that's me. <laughs> Wonderful. And Royce, how can someone get in touch with you? I'm a spiritual counselor and dream worker, and you can find out about me, maybe more than you want to know, <laughs> uh, at, my web, at my website, RoyceFitz.com. And uh, my passion in life uh, is to work with persons in how to create meaning and purpose and adventure and beauty in the midst of the very real brokenness and suffering and the challenges that we have in life. Uh, our life is beautiful and it is full of, of, uh, of lots of contradictions. And when I talk about spiritual counseling, it's about what is it that moves our heart towards beauty and adventure and purpose in the midst of the other stuff of life that is very, very hard to bear. And I use dreams as a way, not use dreams. We allow dreams to be a part of our conversation as a way to help us find that balance of how to survive in this waking world and how to nurture and heal in our inner self and also to help heal the outer world. So that's how you can reach me, RoyceFitz.com. And as of today, you can find me on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, well, as the Healing Dreams Project, we do have a Facebook page. We also have an Instagram page. So follow and like, and of course, we're on YouTube and on all podcast platforms. If you, the listener, are interested in uh, sending in your dreams, we do have a dreamer hotline, and that number is 720-573-9195. I'll repeat, 720-573-9195. Nine one nine five. Send in your dreams. We'd love to hear from you. My name is Viviana. I can be reached at viviana.org, V I V I A N A dot O R G. And this has been Healing Dreams Project Podcast. Till next time, happy dreaming. <laughs>